Good morning, eighth graders. Welcome. This is our technology class week, I believe, uh, 18, I believe we're at. Um, so this is third quarter now. So the assignment that I'm giving today will count for third quarter. Uh, so just a quick reminder, it is Tuesday. So you have until tomorrow, Wednesday, the 13th, to finish any second quarter assignments. So I notice only about 35% of you did the last typing, 59% and 65. So there's a bunch of typing that needs to be done. Um, so please finish your typing. Also, if you're missing any of your other assignments, send them in by tomorrow. So this is for second quarter. I'm just giving you a reminder. Tomorrow's the last day. So please make sure to send anything in. Um, I know some of you guys have completely checked out and just given up. Um, I don't know. I find that to be very tragic. I feel like it's always better to try and do something than to just completely give up, right? And so right now, I'm just going to pray for you. In Jesus' name, I just speak motivation over you that you would realize, like it says in Colossians 3.23, that we should be doing everything as though we're working for the Lord. And if you're really working for God, then you want to give your best effort, right? You know, God doesn't want you to give up. And so I just speak just a supernatural ability, um, motivation to not give up and to keep going and to do something and to make the most of just your last day or two with the quarter here. I just pray that in Jesus name. Okay, so now we're moving on, it's third quarter. So your first typing assignment for third quarter is the one page typing test. So please make sure to do that. Um, and then we are moving on to our common sense media lessons. So if you guys remember, um, we've been doing these now for a couple of years. Uh, they have curriculums for every grade level. So we're working through the grade eight. And this focuses on not only internet safety, but digital citizenship. And just a quick review, what is digital citizenship? So digital citizenship is recognizing that you are part of the digital world, right? So just like we all live here in the United States of America, and we can say, oh, we're citizens of this country, um, and that's a physical place. The internet, the digital world, isn't a physical place. It's a place that we visit on our phones, on our laptops, on our iPads, and it's a digital world, right, connected through the internet. And whenever you go into that world, you become a digital citizen, right? Hence, digital citizenship means that you have to learn how to find balance, how to be a good citizen in the digital world, right? And so that's what we're going to be learning about. So this week, the first topic that they have for you guys is called digital media and your brain. And if you remember um, back, I don't know what year it was, but we talked about the difference between media and digital media, right? And so your good old fashioned regular media is like a newspaper, a magazine, a TV show, anything that's just one sided where you're consuming it, but you can't really interact with it. Digital media, on the other hand, is when you are using an app or a game or a website or something where it allows you to connect with it. You're going into a world, you can make comments, you can like, um, any of those things um, makes it digital because it makes it that now you're going into this world where you're interacting with people in this digital world. Um, so the question for today's lesson is, how does digital media try to hook you and what can you do about it? And so I hope that you guys are starting to get smarter and realizing that they track everything that you do. These phones here, oh, they track every app you click on, every website, every question you type in Google. They know exactly what you're doing. And so why do they do that? Because they want to figure out what's going to hook you. What can they, what ads can they send you? Um, what things can they try to get you hooked with, right? If they know your interests and they know what you're looking at, then they know what's going to hook you. So don't fall for the trap, guys. It's all just a waste of time. That's pretty much what it's trying to do is waste your time and get you to then what happens. 
You fail classes in school because you've been hooked too much and you wasted like six hours on it. And you're just like, oh my gosh, what in the world did I just do for six hours? You're clicking around, clicking around. And then you didn't do your math homework. You didn't do your technology homework. You didn't do your science or whatever it is. And you're failing, right? And it's wrecking people's lives. And so technology, if that's what technology is doing, it probably means it's because you're just, you're not, you're uneducated. You don't, you're falling into the traps. That's why we do these lessons because we want you guys to be well-informed. We want you to be made, be able to make intelligent decisions and have a balanced life with your media. Meaning that there's a time and a place to enjoy it. Of course you can enjoy it. But if it's taking up all your time and wrecking the rest of your life, probably not a good idea, right? And so that's why I want to hopefully educate you guys on these topics um, to be able to use technology for good. All right, so we're gonna be looking at um, different types of digital media, um, good media choices. Um, do they help us in our life? Do they add meaning and value? And what are some good and healthy habits for you guys? So let's take a look at this picture. So, so when we look at this picture here, um, we see these kids, right? And they're all, what are they doing? They're staring at their phones, right? It doesn't even look like they're even looking at each other. And so when, what do you think of when you see this image? I mean, to me, I think, oh my gosh, like kids who don't even know how to look at each other. Anymore. I feel sad. I don't know. I just feel sad. What caption would you write for this message? I would probably write something like, um, talking to each other, but not really, right? It's like, they're probably writing messages or comments and things. Um, but then the funny thing is they're sitting right next to each other. So it's like, instead of like looking at each other, um, you know, they, they're just doing it on their phone. And this is probably what a lot of, you know, people, your age, even anybody these days looks like you, you go anywhere and everybody's always like this. And it's just like, oh my gosh, put your device down, like talk to me, right? And so we have to make, we have an awareness of, are we doing this? And if we are, then, you know, can we just put it down for a minute? Like, can we be in the moment? Can we be present? Can we make sure that our brains aren't being controlled by these devices, right? So that's kind of what I want you guys to start thinking about. And what is a habit? So a habit is something we do automatically without thinking, right? So when we have something that we do over and over again, so maybe you wake up in the morning, first thing you do is pick up the phone and you start checking Instagram, you start checking whatever, and it's becoming a habit, right? We have to learn, we have to kind of go through our day and say, what do I do when I first wake up? And if you don't like what it is and you want to make a change, then you, it, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to break a habit because you have to start a new routine and you have to almost like force yourself to get away from the old routine and move into something that is a habit that you will think is healthy and good for you, right? And that's really important with technology. So I'm gonna put this little video on. So these are kids your age talking about pressure that they feel like they have to stay connected. So let me put this on. I check my phone a lot more than i can count i check it usually when i wake up in the morning before school on the bus ride to school during school a couple times each class at lunch probably check it at break after school or walking home while i'm doing homework i'm constantly checking my phone until i go to bed for me personally the positives of social media are the biggest probably that I feel connected, it's a way for me to talk to my friends at all times when I don't have it. It really feels like I'm on another planet. I don't really wish for the days when I didn't have my phone because it just, it gives me so much like stuff that I like cherish. I think I really enjoy social media when I am discussing issues with like-minded people or um, talking about things I'm very passionate about. I like to make artwork and write and so sometimes I'll use that as a platform to display my art. It's fun. I like posting, I like editing pictures, like it's just fun to be able to talk to my friends all the time. Yeah, I never really feel depressed or anything like that. Just because there's always somebody to talk to and always somebody that's there for you, that's kind of a good thing about social media has definitely created a pressure for people to like keep on doing it and I and I know that it's basically 
to keep them on the app. The autoplay kind of helps me binge watch because like if I don't get to the remote and click back then it's just going to start playing. It is hard to keep track of the episodes and hours when you're binge watching. I think that is definitely part of it. I only have to wait three seconds to see what happens next. So I watched about 10 to 12 episodes in a day one time when I still was home from school and uh, I finished the first season in one day. I think I've done that twice. There's been times where I've planned on just watching like one video, but then I've kept watching more because they're recommended. And then it just keeps going and uh, all of a sudden a ton of time has passed. You know, sometimes when I'm really into the show, um, but I have something else I need to do, it's very hard to decide if I should click out or not. But it starts playing the next episode, I'm like, Oh, it won't hurt. Just one more. You find yourself like two hours later and you're still watching it and you have homework to get done. I would say that I'm definitely hooked on my phone. I'm very dependent on it is the word I would use. I feel that I'm very aware of this and I'm not very happy about it. Sometimes I wish that social media didn't have as much of an impact on my life. I'll work and then every once in a while I'll be like, okay, I'll take a break and then I'll go back and check again and then I'll check for too long and then I waste a bunch of time that way. It really makes you feel less whole when you realize you're putting so much energy into something that's on a little box in your hand. It's something new. It's always exciting. It keeps your attention and that constant turnover of adding new things definitely contributes to the amount of time people spend on it. Okay, so, you know, again, I, I really wish that we could have a discussion about this. It, it's kind of tricky to do this through a video where I'm just talking, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this, you know, how you guys feel about it. Do you feel like, yes, you agree with these kids, like there's positives, but you also could see the addictive nature of it, you know, with all these different features, you know, do you feel pressure to keep up with social media and like any anything, all these apps and things like do you feel like it's get, you have some bad habits that have developed? Like, I would love to hear your thoughts. And so, I mean, I guess, I don't know. If you guys want to talk about this, definitely, you know, let me know. I'm always open to just having a conversation. If you feel like it is getting in the way and you're like, God, I need somebody to hold me accountable. I need a plan. I need to get a hold of myself. Then, yeah, like, let me know. I can help you. Okay. Like, I don't want technology getting in the way of your life. Like, Honestly, I feel like God put me in this position to do technology because I hate technology. <laughs> like, it's really funny. Like, I've never been a technology person. And like, I see the benefits of technology. Like, I see that we should definitely learn computer coding. We should understand how things work. We should be creating apps. I'm totally about creating and having influence. But what I what the part that I hate about technology is the mind numbing dumbness that it does to people, that it just makes people fall into these traps of wasting their lives, you know, on these devices when they could be doing other things. And I feel like it makes them miss out on big chunks of their lives, especially young kids, like little kids, kids your age, where they should be outside playing or being with friends and doing other things or using their imagination, but instead they're just on the device, you know, completely numb and completely in a like trance, right? And I don't want that for you guys, because especially as Christians, we need to be the ones learning technology and saying, how can I create the next Facebook? How can I create the next app? that everybody's going to want to use, you know, and making sure that it's something that's glorifying God. Like, I know that's what God wants. He wants you guys to infiltrate the technology field, but he wants you to do it as the people who are creating things, not the users. The users are useless, right? I mean, the users are great for the people that are creating the stuff because they're making money off of them. But, you know, for you guys, what is it really doing? You know, I mean, yes, it's a lot of fun. And I think there's a time and a place to have fun with those things. But if it's wasting your entire life and you're like not even achieving the things that you're supposed to be doing, then to me, that's really not a good thing. Right. So I want you guys to be thinking about this this week. Um, and so let's talk about a few more things. Um, 
So the other thing I want to talk about is addictive design. So something that's addictive is in a feature or an aspect of a device or an app or whatever. It's intended to hook you. Like the, um, the, the, the play where it just keeps playing episodes. It doesn't stop, right? It just keeps going. It doesn't make you even get up. I mean, that's an addictive feature. Or um, if you play any games where um, maybe it requires you to buy certain items and it's like, oh yeah, if you just get this item, then you're gonna win. And you start feeling addicted to having to get more and get more and get more. And because you feel like next time is gonna be your big win. Um, and so you have to be, have an awareness and, and have kind of like an alert out of, is this addictive, right? Um, and so, the feedback loop, a response to something you do or post online, right, that causes your brain to experience a temporary moment of pleasure. So, for example, you post a picture and everybody's giving feedback on it, but you can't even stop looking at it, right? Because um, you feel like it's just this thing, like you have to keep checking and seeing, did anybody post? Did I, What did they say? Right? And it just keeps going on and on. And so what we really want is humane design. This is features or aspects of a device or app. They prioritize what's good for people's lives. So they, the people who create the apps, they stop and think, okay, if somebody was using this, like, would they be able to put it down? Is it going to be good for them? Is it going to leave, or is it going to leave them addicted? And if the answer is it's going to leave them addicted, I mean, I feel like it would be horrible to go and move forward with that, but they do. Because they know that the people out there in the world are just mindless drones who will follow and they'll just get addicted and they'll keep paying, paying, paying. And they're making these people get richer and richer and richer. And they're just controlling the people. And that's really sad. You guys, when you create your apps, you want to stop and think, is this going to make people feel good where they'll want to come back to it, but it won't feel like they're addicted to it? And that's the kind of app you want to create. And God will inspire you to create those things because he wants what's good for people too, right? And so that's my hope for you guys. You'll be the people creating. Um, so what we're going to do is we have an activity. So everybody's going to get this sheet. And the activity is, let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger so you could see it on here. Um, we're going to go through these different scenarios. Um, so these are apps and you can underline or highlight. So remember, when you're using this, um, you'll be able to edit the one that I send you. Um, so it says, Sam downloaded a meditation app to help him mentally prepare for soccer games. The app allows Sam to choose whether he would like alerts and how many he wants in each day. The alerts suggest tips for relaxing and focusing based on Sam's goals. They suggest things he can do on his own, like taking five deep breaths to relax, doing stretches to relieve stress. So the question is, would this app add value or meaning to Sam's life? Why or why not? So you're going to analyze these apps. You can highlight things that you think are good or bad. Um, I mean, good you because we're looking for humane. We're not looking for addictive. We're looking for humane. So highlight things that you think would be humane and good for the person, and then jot it down if you think it would be good. So there's one, two, two of those. And then the second part is you choose um, a device or app or website that you use a lot. And then you're going to fill in the chart. What's humane about it? What's good about it? And what's addictive about it? So fill it in. And then you're going to write down three guidelines to help you keep track of your behaviors as you use these apps that have a, an addictive design. So something with social media that's addictive. How can you keep track of your behavior and, and get yourself to stop if it's going to a place where you're feeling addicted with gaming, with videos, right? So you're going to fill in this chart. Um, you can pick any app you want for the part two, okay? Or any website or any whatever thing that you use. So that's your homework. You can type it all into here and then email it back to me. And then there's a short quiz. So it's going to be, I'm going to send you the link. When you click in the link, You'll just have to sign in to the Google Classroom and take the quiz. Um, it's a few questions um, reviewing the lesson, okay? So there's the paper that you fill out, you type it in, and then there's the quiz, um, and you're typing too, okay? So that's pretty much our lesson today. And the thing is that, again, this is such a challenging way for me to do the, I love doing these when we're together and we can talk about this. I could hear where you guys are at, so 
Uh, if you want to talk about it, definitely reach out to me um, and we can talk. Okay, guys. All right. So I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.